Welcome to Data Center Energy Efficiency Opportunities, What Managers Should Know. This presentation is brought to you by the U.S. EPA's Energy Star Program. I'm Mike Walker and I'll be presenting part three in our series. This part concerns opportunities to save energy with airflow management in data centers. We walked you through a number of opportunities to save energy with the IT equipment that you'd find in a data center. Let's shift gears now and talk about the second major area of opportunity, which is airflow management. Airflow management is simply about getting cold air from the air conditioning units and or fans as efficiently as possible to the server intakes, which are the fronts of servers where cool air is drawn in to cool the equipment. This is not much different in principle than trying to get the cold air register on an AC, uh, a window AC unit aimed in the right direction to cool your bedroom more effectively. Removing hot exhaust air from the backs of servers to the AC return registers as efficiently as possible is another piece of this. Really what you want to do is avoid mixing the cold quote unquote return air and the hot quote unquote exhaust air. Any mixing of those two air streams results in a lot of inefficiency. Raised floors are commonly used in data centers to provide a more efficient way to deliver cold air from the AC units to the server racks. The way they work is computer room AC units direct cooled air into the subflooring beneath the floor panels where it travels to openings in the floor tiles. We typically call those perforated tiles. And so, assuming there's sufficient air pressure in the subflooring, the air then rises through the openings or perforations in the tiles into the space between the server racks. And there it's drawn into the fronts of the servers to cool them and the hot air is exhausted out of the backs of the servers. Hot exhaust air rises thanks to the laws of physics and it returns along the ceiling to the air conditioning intakes. Another reason to have raised floors is they can provide space for cabling and power distribution lines as well as, as cold air. Hot aisle, cold aisle is a way of delivering cool air and removing hot exhaust air from server racks more efficiently with a lot less mixing of cold and hot air. It basically works by arranging the aisles of servers so that they're facing each other instead of all facing in the same direction. So as you walk down a cold aisle, you'll see the fronts of servers on both sides. Cold air rises from the floor through those perforated tiles into the cold aisle and it's pulled into the fronts of servers on either side of the aisle. And again the hot air is exhausted from the servers on both sides of the hot aisle and that rises to the ceiling. This configuration may be better suited for expansion or new facilities rather than retrofitting because there is significant downtime um, associated with reconfiguring server racks. It's also necessary to make adjustments to the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, uh, and it may be necessary to do new cabling, and of course there's labor and vendor costs as well. So we, we typically see organizations that are expanding into new data center space. They're the ones getting the most utilization out of um, proper hot aisle and cold aisle configuration. So arranging your server racks into cold aisles and hot aisles isn't a perfect solution. It's still possible that you'll see some hot air mixing with cold air over the tops of these server racks and that's what's going on in this illustration. Um, we call this bypass or recirculation. It can be minimized with a technique called containment and in its simplest form containment is simply a clear vinyl shower curtain that hangs from the ceiling and it prevents the hot air and cold air above the server racks from mixing. And in the next slide, you'll see this containment concept taken one step further with rigid containment, which basically replaces these, these what look like shower curtains with hard plexiglass panels. Containment leads to reduced fan speeds, which saves you energy, and it means that the cool air is being delivered to the servers more efficiently so less cooling 
overall is needed and you'll see savings at the AC unit or the chiller as well as a result of this. So we talked about hot aisle and cold aisle layout, which you see in this slide. In addition, you see rigid enclosures, which is a form of containment over the cold aisle in this case to prevent that cold air from mixing with the warm exhaust air. Some other strategies that are a little less obvious, um, variable speed fan drives, which you can't see, but would be contained in this computer room AC unit. We'll talk more about variable speed fan drives in a few moments. You see here that there's plenty of room in the subflooring to allow cold air from the AC units to travel, um, to, to move towards the servers. It's important to have appropriate pressure in the under uh, floor supply. Uh, no obstructions to get in the way of airflow towards the cold aisles. You want to make sure that vented tiles and diffusers, which basically just direct the cold air up from the subfloor, towards the front of servers. You want to make sure those are properly located and sized. It's important to seal around uh, server racks and cabling uh, that goes through the subfloor. You want to make sure that you seal around those with grommets. We'll see more about that in a little bit. And it's important that there's enough room over, over the tops of the server racks for that hot exhaust air to make its way back to the air conditioning units. There is often unused rack space with no servers mounted in them in server racks. These openings in the server rack basically jeopardize the hot aisle, cold aisle configuration because they allow the mixing of hot air back into the cold aisle. And one of the simplest, cheapest, and most effective airflow management strategies involves the use of blanking panels. These are simply thin plastic panels that seal up the openings the unused spaces in server racks. And a single blanking panel can improve a server rack's energy efficiency by 1 to 2 percent and more if multiple blanking panels are used as you see in the illustration on the right here. You saw grommets on a previous slide. Here's a closer look. Grommets basically seal openings in the raised floor tiles that are there for cabling and power lines and for bolting down server racks. They result in less leakage of cold air from the subfloor area and that means more cold air is available to cool equipment. So the scene here on the left isn't all that unusual. This is a rack of servers and switches viewed from the back where hot air is exhausted um, and direct it out of the back of the servers. The tangled wires basically impede the flow of hot air, hot air away from the equipment. On the right here, you see what we call structured cabling. It not only looks a lot nicer, it provides more room for air to flow away from the back of the server rack. Better air circulation means fewer hot spots and less cool air is needed to keep the servers operating in their recommended temperature ranges. QTS is a major data center operator in the United States. They conducted an airflow audit of sorts at one of the largest data centers in the world, a million square feet. What they did as a result of the assessment was they removed obstructions to vented tiles so that air could flow freely from the subflooring into server aisles. They closed vented tiles that were not in use. In other words, vented tiles that were in areas where cool air was not needed. They installed some of the grommets that we had a look at in an earlier slide. They used vinyl covers to seal gaps around doors, pipes, and windows. And they managed to save $60,000 in just the two initial months after changes were made. So their estimated annual savings is, is approximately $360,000. This project was part of a very comprehensive energy efficiency upgrade. It included economizers, which we'll talk about later, more efficient lighting, um, increasing the chilling, 
chiller temperatures. But QTS estimates that the airflow measures that they implemented, described on this slide, led to about 20% of the overall savings. Let's talk about variable speed drives. Standard fans inside computer room AC units are either on or off. And the problem with standard fans is that even if only a little cooling is needed, the fans run at full blast. Variable speed drives allow the fan speed inside the computer room AC units to adjust proportionally to the demand for cool air. And because fans are such a significant share of the data center's energy consumption, making fans more efficient really helps to lower power use. Physics tells us that the power consumed by a fan is proportional to the cube of the speed at which it's running. So reducing the fan speed just a bit has an outsized impact on power use. Many energy efficiency measures such as the cold aisle, hot aisle orientation that we talked about earlier, containment, temperature adjustments, which we'll talk about subsequently to this, free cooling, all of these depend on variable speed fan drives in the computer room ACs uh, in order to fully realize their energy savings potential. So widely recognized as a, as a D, pardon me, data center energy efficiency measure that new data center construction is required uh, in California uh, to have variable speed fan drives on the HVAC systems. However, variable speed fan drive retrofits, unlike many other data center energy efficiencies, um, are well understood by utilities and they're often incentivized by utilities. So it's possible um, if you are interested in variable speed fan drives that your utility will help fund the costs of the upgrade. So we would be remiss if we didn't mention some of the considerations around variable speed fan drives. In older computer room AC units, the slower fan speeds that variable speed fan drives deliver can result in condensation or water and ice developing on the coils. Ice is a problem because it restricts airflow across the coils and it may prevent liquid refrigerant from evaporating, which can damage the compressor in the unit. Um, but the bottom line is you need to check with the manufacturer to make sure you can retrofit older AC units with variable speed drives. New units should not have any issues. Also, installing a number of variable speed fan drives in a data center can affect the power quality by introducing harmonic waves. The solution involves ins installing what we call harmonic mitigating transformers. More on that in the next slide. So eBay retrofitted their computer room air handling units with variable speed drives and they saw a tremendous reduction in energy use. The new fans use about a quarter of the electricity of the old fans. And the simple payback was 2.6 years, partly because they had uh, to buy these harmonic transformers that I mentioned on the previous slide. However, the local utility paid for $300,000 of equipment costs, and that resulted in an actual payback of 1.6 years. So well worth the investment. Thanks again for attending. My name again is Mike Walker. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about this material, and I hope you'll proceed to the next part of this series, part four, which covers ways you can save energy in the data center with heating, ventilation, and air conditioning adjustments and humidity controls presented by my colleague Robert Wong of the Cadmus Group.